Well, while I'm waiting for the parts, the uh, the back and the surround for the shutter amount to come back, they're currently in the the paint the paint bake oven, if you like, which is just one of those cheap toaster ovens. I'll put a few parts on the camera body. I think we'll start with that. That little insert is the where your film cassette sits and run the screws in here into the tripod socket three screws you can usually tell even if you've done a fairly thorough job of cleaning which screws came from the base of the camera or under leatherettes because they've usually either rusty or stained with the old adhesive that was holding the leatherettes in place. So these three screws are all in place, now they're all in place I can tighten them up. At the top of the camera, here of course I've got my rewind Film rewind shaft. I was just busy looking at this this lever here, and I can see that it runs off at somewhat less than 90 degrees. There, I think that might need a little little adjust. Does anyone's guess what abuse this camera has suffered? So, taking some synthetic grease, I'll lubricate the bush here for the rewind film rewind shaft. Seems to run reasonably well. There's a cutout on one side of that. That goes to the inside so it clears the rangefinder. those two screws up tight. Now our rewind knob. I'll just sort that out while I'm here. Now the rewind knob, in this case it was just coming apart basically. The uh, screw was loose. Somebody had taken it apart the wrong way I suppose. I'll just give that a clean. Checking I've got the right tool there. So I'll just clean that, get rid of all the dust and dirt. Likewise that piece. That's around the outside edge. That's good. Now I'll lubricate the wavy washer with a little bit of synthetic grease. Pop that over the centerpiece, pop that over the top, take the screw, and I've got a tool here for engaging the holes in this screw, run that down and do that up tight. That's our film reminder dial, the centre part is just your pointer that you use. And there's an arrow engraved on there to remind you which way you turn it to rewind your film. Some people have trouble with that. The leatherette did come off the parts door fairly readily and I'll flatten this out and then I'll use it to cut some discs there's spares for uh, the centre of advance levers like that. 
not for this camera mate. Okay, what do I want to put on here next? I think we can put in the, the rangefinder coupling parts, I think. It's a fair bit of this stuff. And we'll want this piece, this baffle. Now the baffle, as I noted, was coming, it was out of place. It shouldn't fall out of place in normal use. It should stay where it's put. We'll make sure that it does. This frame that holds this arm needs to go in place. So a little bit of uh, synthetic grease here won't hurt. I'll put some on the pin of our moving arm, top and bottom. And there were tiny washers that went on there, and the synthetic grease I've just put on there will help those stay in place while I'm handling this. Otherwise, they'll fall off and no, I never find the damn things. So this goes into this hole at the top and into that hole on that bracket at the bottom and then that'll slide down in there. Of course it doesn't, it's not helpful when it falls out like that. It slides in there like that. Before I can screw that in place, I need to put the transfer shaft in place. That's this piece here. So I'll lubricate both ends of that. Now one end of this has got a washer on it. That goes to the back of the camera. So I'll get this down into the cavity. It's seated in the hole at the back. Put that arm back down in place. In holding this carefully, I can get the three screws in at the top that keep it all together. At least that's the theory. I've got one screw started, that's good. Can't go anywhere near. There's one at this end. The two screws at this end in particular, they're only hanging on by a very small amount. At two threads at the most. Now that, that piece is in place. This piece sets our frames for the uh, viewfinder show you your different frames for the different lenses fitted. There's a return spring for this arm. Needs to go over its post here. That's easily lost. And this piece here needs to go in, this baffle plate. It'll be held in once everything's in place. Can you see the state of this plastic here? See all of this? That solvent, that solvent damage to the plastic. You know, something's happened to that. I would imagine that when somebody was farting around at the base of the camera, perhaps they squirted some solvent into the shutter, something like that. It's run down, hit this, has melted that plastic. Now I'm going to put a, a dot of adhesive top and bottom there, 
to hold this little metal baffle in place while I'm working on the camera because it's annoying the way it falls out. There we go, that'll do. I'll give that a minute or two to set up. It means that'll stay in place while I'm working on the rest of it. See if that'll sit square the other way up. Yes, it does. Right, pop that to one side. What else can I be doing to the body while I'm waiting for that to happen? Okay, lock lever and release lever. I'll take some molybdenum paste. and run it through the holes in the casting that these levers pass through. And this part of the casting where the spring on the end of the release lever runs. Here's my lock lever. It's return spring and this C-clip. that in position, just passes up through the body there and holding it in place with my finger from below, take the spring, hold that compressed with my thumb, pick up the clip, put that in place, press it in place with the heel of my tweezers, that's the lock lever in place. Now the release lever has a return spring on its base. It's this little thing here, which I removed earlier to save it getting damaged while I was working on this. How can I hold this so you can see? Probably can't. But to get this hooked into position, So that it sits around that boss there. Well, that's that's good. That's that's went smoothly. I've got to get this in place. It passes up through the body at the top here. Got to make sure the spring's not trapped anywhere silly. Take its return spring. Pop that on the top. And then there's the screw. on the top which holds this all together and that's where your adjustments are made for the stroke of the release lever so that the shutter releases and the film mechanism is released to allow you to wind onto the next frame at the same point in the stroke of the shutter release so that you don't end up with having to press the film release button each time. Well, that's okay. We've got the three screws in there. We have all right. This piece now I'm going to put into place. I'll swing back that. Let that swing out of place. This only goes one way up. Fits in there. That drops into place. And 
and I'll put the chrome trim on the top to hold all that in position at the moment. So I'll just put a single screw through there at the top just to hold it so that it doesn't fall forward and annoy me while I'm busy putting other parts in here. So well I've made a start and uh, soon enough I'll get those parts back. I can put the back on the camera once I've got it back from painting. Now yeah, what can go on next? I think that the film advance shaft and the take up spool can go on. The film advance shaft I'm just checking again to make sure that that disc on the end isn't loose. It seems good. I'm going to put lubricate this with some graphite grease. This is a little bit a bit rough, that feels a bit rough there the way that's, that bush is running on there. It may have been slightly bent perhaps. I'm just looking at this to see if it looks square to me. If it's out, it's not out by much. Graphite grease. If there's any tightness in, in the bush on something like this, people are tempted to increase the amount of tension on the return spring. Because how it typically shows is that the film advance lever doesn't want to return to the rest position if it's a little bit stiff. So some people are inclined to wind up the tension very high in order to force it to return or this one here that this is a fairly yeah this is why it's a bit rough in practice I can see now someone has done exactly what I've said they've wound up the tension on this to such an extent that the last coil of the spring here has cut a groove into the brass of the advance shaft here someone's wound the tension up too high so that it was binding in with each advance stroke and that's the roughness that I felt then. Hopefully that won't cause us an issue. I'm not going to wind up the tension as high as that. But that's what someone has done. They have wound up the tension on the, the return spring here. And as a result, it's caused damage. It can actually, can actually make the action stiffer which then causes people to think that they haven't got enough tension on the return spring and they wind it up even more. It's not a winning technique. Hopefully this will work nicely. If it doesn't... Oh yes, if it doesn't, I'll have to replace that shaft in its entirety. So, well, hand, handily we've got the back off the camera, so I can put this straight in. Feed the film advance shaft in. Get this positioned where it should be, which is the start position is there. I'm looking to see if I can see through the screw holes and so forth. It's there. That's it, it's dropped into position and it just requires the three screws that hold that in place. When you're hunting through the screws to find the ones that came from here, one thing you can tell is that they are not the ones with glue on them, because the ones with glue on them came from the base plate. So the screws might be greasy if you haven't degreased them. But they won't have glue on them. They're the same size as the screws that hold the base plate on. It's um, not going to cause you any serious problem if you mix them up. And 
and if the cleaning process was very thorough, there's no glue on anything, and the screws are very interchangeable. No one's ever going to know. Okay, that's in position. The next thing I need to worry about is the clutch at the top. And the clutch is three pieces. And this typically I lubricate with graphite grease. You could use something else. This just I've just discovered that this particular stuff works well for me. I like the feel of it, it's smooth in its action. There should be controlled slippage here. Um, and I find this stuff works quite well. But I need Another, I need my crimp pliers, crimp lug pliers to hold this spring in while I assemble this. 